Okay, so here we are on step number 11 of the Teddy Bear Sewing Project, sewing the foot pads or the paws with the back stitch. So again, as always, you're going to come through the back. You always start the back stitch, remember, with one running stitch. Please keep your stitches small and close together again. So you're going to do one running stitch and then you're going to come up ahead. You try to show the camera, not too, too far ahead. So I come up ahead about the same size as that last stitch and then you're going to go through that last stitch. This is going to be a little bit harder, okay, because you're going around in a circle. So do your best with this. Come up ahead. and go back to the last stitch. So I'm going to continue to sew this and then um, come back and show you how to restart it because when you restart it you already have the running stitch so you're going to come up ahead of the last stitch. So that will make more sense once I show you. So again you're going to try to go around a little bit in from the edge. It is hard to do so you want a lot of students go in too far. You want to be careful or else it's going to it's going to come up, all right? So I'll show you in a moment what it should look like about halfway 3 quarters around. Okay, so I sewed around 3 quarters of the foot pad. If you can see my nice small even stitches. At this point, I'm going to take my pin out and I've noticed I only have about 3 inches of thread. You need to stop at that point. Although I only have a small portion to sew, I would have to take all my stitches out because I wouldn't be able to end it. So make sure you come to the back and you end it with a loop knot and then you will have to re-thread and knot your needle. So students usually continue to sew and say, Mrs. Sauer, how do I end it? I don't have any thread. And at that point, I have to say, I'm sorry, I have some bad news. You may have to take out all those stitches because you have to end with a loop knot every time. So I've ended this. I'm going to then cut above it. And yes, I have to re-thread and knot. An arm's length? Yes, I always go an arm's length. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to restart the stitch. Okay, because you already have a stitch here. So I'm going to come up ahead. Let me just thread a knot my needle and I'll be right back. Okay, so how do I continue the back stitch on the foot pads? I've made it about three quarters around and remember you're going to come up ahead now. This is my last stitch. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to come up ahead of it. Remember it's the back stitch. It needs to connect. It should look like a straight line. It's a circular line right now and it should connect. And then I'm going to go through that last stitch. Whoops. pull that okay and then you're just going to continue like you were so again make sure you keep those stitches small and close together I'm going to continue to the end I'm going to move on to my second foot pad and then I'll show you when I'm done with that okay so at this point I have completed both of my foot pads I'm ending with my loop knot and I'm going to show you what my stitches look like my pin should already be out so nice small even stitches you'll see that they connect using the back stitch beautiful you're going to do the best you can it's hard to go around in a circle you will then check off and then you will begin to move on to step number 12 which is the muzzle with an overcast stitch and that video will be next okay so i just finished step number 11 which is sewing on the foot pads with the back stitch. Let me just show you what they should look like. So nice, small, even stitches. Using the back stitch, it is a little hard to go around, but you can do it as long as you take your time. I'm not looking for perfection here. Just make sure that they are small, they are even. You're not too far in the middle. You wanna be just away from the edge of each of the foot pads. The next step will be step number 12, which is sewing the overcast around the muzzle.